Hey, Alex Williams of the New Stack here today with Alexander Graby of SAP, who is an evangelist there. And today, Alex is going to talk about SAP Open UI 5. He's going to give a demonstration of it, but first he's going to give us a you know, just show us what you know what the project is all about but first of all alex thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for the warm introduction um, alex as you already mentioned i'm a developer evangelist um, at the sap developer relations team and i'm um, here in palo alto right now what i'm doing with open ui5 is essentially i'm evangelizing the technology talking about it and showing uh, people how to get started with it so my focus is um, on front end also uh, um, and as well as on open source let me just start off and show the GitHub page of OpenUI 5, and then I'll start explaining what the whole project is about. This is the GitHub page of OpenUI 5, and as you can see it already, it is open source, completely for free, um, developed by SAP, and then we started open source um, uh, the whole technology. So at the beginning, it was called SAP UI 5. It was available only internally for customers, but now we're starting open sourcing it. Uh, one of the reasons behind it is that um, we're using open source technologies for this specific uh, library and we wanted to give back to the community. So we just started doing that. And the project is on GitHub since last year. Actually, we've been to OSCON last year and we announced that it's going to be on GitHub and it's open source. And as you can see uh, right now, we have many, many people following it, uh, watching it, many stars, and a tremendous amount of people forking the, the libraries as well, as you can see over here. Um, we do have many spin-off projects using OpenUI 5, um, replacing certain things. For example, OpenUI 5 essentially is a JavaScript framework that helps you to create web applications. And the web applications are usually HTML5 based, you develop in JavaScript, um, and so on and so forth. But one bigger component of OpenUI 5 is also that there is um, um, the UI part. So we, we do have um, one UI part um, as, op um, as part of OpenUI 5, but also some kind of core features that you would need in order to develop HTML5 uh, web apps. Now the UI component in order to come to get back to the spin-off project, uh, there is one project that replaced the complete UI component with, that we're delivering OpenUI 5 with, and they replaced it with a bootstrap, for example. Mm. Or there's another project that replaces the whole core features with, let's say, Angular. Hmm. But essentially, we deliver um, OpenUI 5 as one library, and it, it essentially has all the features that you might need for your uh, web applications. And where we're, where we're strong in, uh, we're strong in the enterprise business because we're still SAP and we do have all the different customers and we know the use cases that people will um, you know, face whenever they develop a new web application. So we, we label OpenUI 5 as a library that is very, really focusing on the enterprise ready applications or enterprise focused applications means that we're considering different use cases that you might not consider when you start off with a very small web app for example internalization is part of it um, routing is part of it and uh, theming templating everything um, that you might need for a bigger project we already have as part of that so that's essentially open ui5 and as you can see over here this is the github page we're accepting pull requests already many many people creating issues and so on and so forth one very important part might be, um, and this is really interesting, uh, and I'm really fascinated by that. Um, as of right now, since OpenUI Half is on GitHub and people can create pull requests and create their own code, uh, well, code pieces for the project, we're actually taking back all the developments and we're putting it back into SAP UI 5 since we're synchronizing the internal technology with the, with the open, um, open source project. So what it gives you as of right now is as an external developer, you can actually modify an SAP technology that we deliver to each and every customer, which is a huge, huge benefit. You can get all the information that I was just explaining to you in like much more detail on openui5.org over here. You can see it. And it's essentially explaining everything that OpenUI5 does. You can get started. Um, you, can get, you can download the library and so on and so forth. Um, one important piece that I did not mention yet so far is that OpenUI 5 has really, really big benefits because it's implementing all the UI components. What it means to you is that you can actually, as the, the sentence says already, you could code once and run it on any device because all of our UI controls are responsive and adaptive. So you don't really care about, you know, you don't really consider if your application will be running on tablet or if it will be running on a mobile phone or a desktop. You just develop it once, and then um, the framework is taking care of the, the optimization for the specific device. 
So over here we have all the explanations and uh, the key features I mentioned here, as I already said, a lot of them are really enterprise focused. So it's a lot about internalization, extensibility, um, and so on and so forth. On the other side, there's something that is extremely important in order to understand um, OpenUI 5. Uh, we're using extremely powerful and um, well-known concepts, development concepts within the framework. So for example, we're employing the model view controller pattern, which essentially um, divides your application into three different pieces. Um, there is the model piece, the view piece, and the controller piece. And I do have a code example in order to outline uh, and highlight how it works actually in practice. But on the other side, we also allow people to create, um, create their application in different formats. So for example, you can create a view with XML, HTML, JavaScript, and JSON, depending on what the developer might be familiar with. So you can actually pull in even, even designers that are familiar with HTML, you can pull them in, let them create the UI, and then you as a core designer will just take care of the interactions and the controller features. Um, let me switch over to the code example very quickly. So I do have a, um, a small code example over here um, that you actually can access with this link. I can share that later with you as well. Um, it's essentially a code piece um, that shows a very, very simple application of OpenUI 5. But it has many, many use cases that most people will be using whenever they're creating a new web, web application. Um, just first of all, I don't know if you're familiar with JSBin. JSBin is a JavaScript playground, essentially giving you the editor here on the left and the preview of your application that's gonna be a live reloaded immediately on the right over here. So this code basically reassembles what is on here. Um, as you can see, this, this code, uh, this um, application is really simple. There's just one button. You can click on that button and then it shows a list of something. Now, in order to um, give you a perspective of what, is it, what it essentially does is it actually uses the GitHub API, loads some data from the GitHub API, um, makes the data accessible within your new UI 5 application, and then shows it within the UI. And I want to outline that it is really, really simple to create such an application with already so many use cases. As you can see it over here, um, I cannot scroll. This is the whole code, right? That there is not much more than that. Um, essentially what we're doing here is we're making use of the script tag here in order to develop our application. And just to give you a perspective of how, how UI5 looks like, it is really just a JavaScript library that you include within your HTML file. And then out of that, you can create your UI5 application. So you can see over here that there's essentially the script tag loading our library and then give it a few more attributes, like um, what kind of library should we use? Within here, we're using the mobile first libraries. And then also theming. As already mentioned, there's theming included. You can have your own themes as well. And we do have a theme editor that you can access in order to predefine and change your theme if you'd like to. Now, um, the first application, well, the application over here, this is the whole code. This is everything that you essentially see on the, on the right side. Uh, what it does is it creates a, a new application from the ground. So uh, each and every open UI5 application usually consists of um, different pages. And over here, we create a new app, and then we say, add the different pages that I created before. And then there's this interesting um, 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 method called place at, and it takes an ID of an HTML element. Now, if you, if you look closely, the ID is basically the body. It reassembles the body. This comment uh, basically does one important thing, um, and it's re really crucial to understand that. Um, our JavaScript framework or library is essentially working like a framework. We tell the library how it should um, create elements, UI components or UI elements, and then based on that, it figures out on which platform it's running, on which device it's running, and then it's generating the code automatically and placing it into a, a specific um, HTML element. So this is kind of where the magic happens. This is where the whole framework generates everything based on the information you, you gave it before. Now the information over here is quite simple. Um, at the beginning, we're loading some data. So we're making use of the GitHub API, as I already mentioned, and we're storing that as a, as a model that is accessible to the whole application. So each and every control can actually access that. Now, very important concept behind that is that OpenUI 5 has um, two-way data binding included. And it's not only two-way data binding, it actually can be configured and can be only one-way data binding as well. 
over here, out of the box, we're just making use of the two-way data binding, which means that whenever the code site would change, our UI would update as well automatically without us taking care of that. As you can see over here, I never implemented any, any uh, method that says, you know, load me the data from the model, put it into UI, and then do it in this way. I'm not doing that. I'm basically telling the framework, this is the model, and this is where I'm accessing the model in the UI, and it's taking care of the whole thing behind the, uh, behind the stage automatically. Now, um, one other important piece might be, um, since I already mentioned we were focusing on enterprise-ready um, applications, uh, within SAP, we do have a lot of knowledge about how those um, huge and complex enterprise applications look like and how to decompose them as well. So one important piece of information is for us that uh, we know that we are dealing with a lot of lists. There are so many different lists, and they, they some, sometimes look similar, sometimes they look different. And what we did there is we actually have some kind of a modular um, list uh, hierarchy. So you can, you can say over here that there will be a list displayed on the second page. And then the list takes um, uh, a specific template, and the template represents each and every list item. So for example, over here, we're using just a really, really basic standard list item. So we're just displaying a title. But you could, you could have more complex list, um, uh, list items there. You could have something reassembling object statuses, maybe quantity, maybe currencies of a certain elements. So you can have all of that. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to allow people that um, have really simple use cases to get started really quick. But also, if you do have complex use cases, you can just switch over, in that case, the template, and then you can display much more detail, much more complex information maybe about the project. Um, I guess that's already it for, for the code example. If you do have some questions, Alex, just ask me some. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just mention our next initiatives and our upcoming sessions. Great. I think the only question I have is like, you know, that there's lots of, there are lots of uh, JavaScript libraries available. Yeah. And, uh, you know, think of Angular, you know, for example. And I'm just curious, you know, why, why we need another one? What yeah. is the value here? Very good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, I guess our big advantage is, um, and I always come up with that example, um, I usually tell people they should just think about whenever they're creating a new project, what they would like to use, right? Uh, as of right now, you might start a new project and then you start using Angular, as I already mentioned. Then you need some UI components, so you're using Bootstrap. Maybe you want to do some HTML templating, so using handlebars and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, you find yourself using at least like seven or eight different libraries just to come up with a simple use case. Now, what we did with OpenUI 5 is we're actually using different open source libraries that are already um, considered being um, the specific library to go with for, for a specific use case. And we're bringing those libraries together, uh, and we're creating the glue between these libraries. So essentially, if you would develop a new web application, you could just use OpenUI 5, just this one specific library without any other addition, and you can come up with a, either a really simple, um, simple application or a really enterprise-ready and more complex application without adding any other libraries. So that's, I guess, the big benefit. You really just have one library that has UI components included, two-way data binding, and all the different enterprise-ready uh, features, um, and you don't need to you know, take care of how to combine them. Great. So what do you have coming up? Um, well, one important aspect is if you're starting off with that technology, please visit our developer center. You can find it on developers.sap.com. And over here, there's a section um, for getting started. As you can see over here, we do have three different sections. And um, SAP UI 5 is essentially the same as Open UI 5, just with one difference. SAP UI 5 is developed to every customer, and Open UI 5 is open sourced on GitHub. And we kind of, you know, um, taking care of the whole synchronization between these projects. So whenever you have questions regarding, uh, in regards to OpenUI 5, just get started over here, and then you will be redirected to a community where you can ask questions. And it's a really lively community, so you can see people asking questions all the time and getting answers all the time. Um, this is a really good resource to get started. And then on the other side, we're actually at OSCON next week with OpenUI 5 and a few other projects. This was uh, published during OSCON, so it's right, so uh, we're, Will be people will be able to watch this and go and go see the uh, presentation. Yeah, that would be amazing. Actually, <laughs> uh, we will have one session. Um, actually, this session is developed by um, 
two different uh, different developers that are part of the UI5 team. So you can see um, Janina and Michael will be presenting about how to avoid headaches whenever somebody's developing web application. Mm -hmm. And they will, they will uh, explain some certain concepts that should be followed. Um, and then we will have a booth there. So you can visit our booth, you can ask us questions, and we will have uh, a few other projects that are really, really interesting. Um, please stop by and visit us.